everybody, Phil here. So I made a video on how to adjust to Maniacs. Uh, and specifically, I, I talked about three different types of Maniacs and how I would adjust my play. Uh, now I'm not gonna go through all of that once again, but uh, you can check out the video if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, today's video is gonna be about a question that was in response to that video. Do you think a Maniac style works well at low stakes tournaments at other tournaments? Uh, because I see these players accumulating chips uh, quite often. First of all, I'll, I'll talk about why you have to be careful about observing evidence and, and drawing conclusions from it. And then I'll talk about kind of maniac style of play and the pros and cons. And then actually at the end, I'll, I want to talk through a tip of, of how you can get yourself to play a little bit more aggressively if it's something that's uncomfortable for you, uh, which is somewhere I've been myself. There are a lot of different elements in this. I really like this question because there are different elements of it. So the first element that I want to address is variance. So we all see very loose, aggressive players build big stacks in tournaments. And um, we actually very often see them go deep in tournaments or win tournaments. This does not mean that it's a profitable style. It also doesn't mean that it's not. But I think the important thing to keep in mind is that a super tight style is not going to accumulate a big stack in the early stages of the tournaments. It's, it's essentially impossible. So if we have a 100 person tournament and 50 players are playing extremely tight and 50 players are maniacs, at the end of day one, almost all the big stacks are going to be maniacs. And it doesn't mean they're better than the tight players. It just means that you can't, you don't get all of your chips in all the time if you're super tight. It's important to, to keep that in mind because we may have biases towards seeing something that's supposed to happen randomly to certain types of players and assuming that means that they're doing something right. Now, all of that said, I do think that tournaments, especially low stakes tournaments or generally softer tournaments, players who play very aggressively in these tournaments tend to do well. The reason for that is I think the average player plays too tight and too passive against these styles. So what ends up happening is these players open with too many hands. They don't get three bet enough, so that's okay. They steal the blinds a little more than they should, so that works out well for them. They get to the flop, they bet. They don't get raised nearly enough. Um, they get more folds than they should. You know, they're betting third pot on the flop, half pot on the turn, 80% pot on the river, and they're getting like 40% folds on the flop and then 50% folds on the turn and then 60% folds on the river. And actually each of those bets is profitable with any two cards. Um, oversimplified, but basically that's it. So I think the style works really well um, against, well, your average player in a, in a smaller stakes tournament um, because kind of the mentality, first of all, it's hard to make a hand and hold them. And um, especially in those like late position open spots where you have to defend your blinds with more hands than some people are comfortable with. Either they overfold preflop, which works out well for the maniac, or they defend with some of those hands that should, but not three bet enough. They don't three, they never three bet enough. And then they check fold the flop because they whiffed or they call with middle pair and then they call the turn because this guy's a maniac. But then when they fire the last barrel in the river, they're like, ah, I just don't want to risk this much money. And they fold. A lot of the, the way people play tournaments is that they're, as opposed to a cash game, I mean, people play fearfully in cash games too, but in a cash game, you can always rebuy. And in tournaments, you have one tournament life, unless it's a re-entry. Um, but even in that case, people don't like busting out of tournaments. They don't like risking large percentages of their stack. And so you, there are so many spots that come up where I think that you'll have somebody who's folding something like 80% of their range to a pot bet, making a bluff very profitable with any two cards. So these maniacs find themselves in spots where they just get to make a lot of these profitable bluffs on flop, on turn, on river, hand in, hand after hand, and they just accumulate chips. And then actually what works super well for them is that if they're a good maniac, if they're smart and they're good at hand reading, they've made all these plays, they've picked up chips here and there again and again, and they have this image of a maniac. And now they enter a pot and it's clear that somebody else likes their hand but actually the maniac has a really good hand, well, now the maniac can get paid off. If they have a good feeling that their opponent has something pretty good, um, they'll stop with their bluffs, but when they have a big hand, they'll keep betting and they get paid off really big because they've, they've kind of earned that through their image. Um, so I think a really loose aggressive style does work well in tournaments, specifically the aggressive part. I think, you know, the tougher your competition gets, the, the more punished you get by playing super loose. Um, because they're not going to make such big mistakes that you can make up for it, um, that you can make up for playing, you know, seven, four suited raising under the gun. So I would say relentless aggression with reasonable opening ranges is going to work well in a lot of mid stakes 
tournaments. And a lot of small stakes tournaments, relentless aggression that is that is uh, even a little less intelligent. I think will work pretty well. But you do have to you do have to be ready to fold when people who are generally playing scared start playing back at you. And that's why actually the way to adjust to these players is you actually have to three bet more. You have to check raise bluff the flop. You have to you have to do some things um, to combat their aggression. Otherwise, uh, you know, if you just call down appropriately, they're not actually even losing to that. They're just breaking even on their bluffs, essentially. So yeah, in short, A, just because you see somebody uh, accumulate a lot of chips or you see a certain player type accumulate a lot of chips doesn't mean that the way that they're playing is, is correct. Um, it could just be that, you know, high variance players accumulate big stacks. But that said, I do think in a lot of uh, non-expert fields, uh, the very loose aggressive style works super well. Um, the other the other reason that even in tougher fields, I would err on the side of preferring somebody play aggressively and too loose is because playing too loose and too aggressively is usually it's usually not going to cost you that much in a tournament. Um, unless you're against really tough players. But playing too tight and especially too passively is going to cost a lot of EV. If you put 100 players in a tournament and you and you put two bad players in, like I know they're bad, they don't really understand poker, but one of them is just super aggressive and one of them is just super passive, the passive player essentially has zero chance to win the tournament of 100, like probably literally zero to win a 100 player tournament depending on how just how passive they are. The aggressive player actually has a chance. Even if they're worse than the average player, they have a real chance to win. And that's, you know, all the money is made at the at the later stages of the tournament where wielding a big stack adds a lot of EV. And so accumulating a big stack adds a lot of EV. And taking advantage of people who overfold, which is the more common leak, adds a lot of EV. So I would always uh, take somebody on the more aggressive side in a, in a tournament specifically. Um, whereas in a cash game, fear is kind of less of an issue they're usually not antis, which actually is a massive factor here. Um, picking up antis is, is is a huge, huge part of tournament play. If you played a tournament without antis, um, then I'd actually then then it gets a little bit different um, in terms of who I'd prefer. One thing that I think can work well for people who are not naturally very aggressive, their natural poker style is not very aggressive, is to think of a player who you play with who is very aggressive, and when you go to play, just try this one session and try it at lower stakes than you like. Try it in a game you're comfortable losing in. Um, just pretend that you're them and think when you look at your cards, what would they do with these cards? And, and just do that for an hour and see how it feels and see how you do. Um, I think that's a really good way to get yourself out of your own head, essentially, and playing a style. Because uh, it's really tough to force yourself to play a style you're not used to. I think this is a nice uh, little hack to get you a little bit closer to it or get you some experience playing in a style that you're not used to. Hopefully that that answers your question and for others out there uh, helps you plan a little bit more. Um, it's important that you're comfortable with the style of poker you play. Uh, so I wouldn't urge you, if it's really unnatural to play super aggressively, you can try it maybe in smaller buy-ins and see how it feels and build up to it. But it's okay to play a style that's just tight and reasonably aggressive. However, if, you, if your natural state is just super, super passive play, which actually probably my natural state 15 years ago was, was something closer to that, um, you have to work on it because uh, it's, it's not going to work well for tournaments. Good luck. Mm -hmm.